Hello everyone, in this video we are going to see the procedure for the submission of tender and for opening of the tender. So let's see what is the procedure for submission of tender. See, according to the directions contained in the notice, there is one notice we have seen what is tender notice. So as per the directions or instructions in the tender notice which is inviting the tender the contractors are required to submit their tender on or before the date and hour fixed for the same duly filled in signed and witnessed see they should what is the requirement of submission of tender first they should submit their tender on or before the date and hour which is mentioned in the tender notice that is the first requirement then it should be filled in properly there should not be any blank columns and uh, blank lines whatever data data they have required they have told to fill that should be filled in that particular form then it should be signed by the contractor and there is also sign of the witness whatever is the whoever is the witness so these are the data that you should fill and it should be submitted on or before the date and hour which is mentioned in the tender notice then before that he has to deposit the earnest money in the manner prescribed in the format that is form number 6 of pwd he should also deposit the earnest money that is mentioned in the tender notice form that is the second requirement then once all the documents for the tender have been prepared they must be sealed and submitted at the location specified in the tender notice and or tender documentation then all the documents that he will require that he has prepared he should feel that he should seal that he should submit to the specified location that location which is mentioned in the tender notice he should do that who the contractor contractor should fill those documents he should present those documents he should attach those documents along with his tender form and he should submit it at the specified location which wherever is the location of submitting that particular tender form that is mentioned in the tender notice he should submit that then documents can be submitted in person person by the tenders tenderers themselves or by the representative or by mail there are three options he has available the tenderer who is submitting the tender he can submit it by himself in the person then by any representative his any staff or employee his partner whoever he is he can submit that by him also or by mail these are options that is the requirement of submission of tender then the tender documentation also lists the time and location when the bids are open then there is also mentioned when this particular tender will be opened that is also mentioned in the tender notice so these are the requirements for the contractor or tenderer how to submit a tender these are the requirements first it should be signed it should be properly filled it should be uh, submitted on or before the uh, date which is mentioned in the tender notice earnest money should be deposited in the prescribed format then all the documents copies should be attached he should be he should seal that submit it the, in the prescribed location that is mentioned in the tender notice then he can submit it by person himself by himself or by the representative or he can mail that particular documents and tender form and the location and the time is also mentioned in the tender notice so this is the submission of tender and larger government entities have space special room for this purpose big government bodies larger entities of the government they have special rooms for opening of the tender then bidders can present at the opening of the bids they if no bidders are present the procuring entity will have staff present as witness means they can be present they can be there at the time of opening the tender or their representative can also attend that particular meeting at the time of opening the bids or tenders after awarding the contract the procuring entity will inform the tenderers of the result in writing finally that contractor who is been selected 
to whom the contract will be awarded he will be informed in writing also so this is the standard procedure then tendering results are also published in the notice in the government gazette or local equivalent and made available on the entity's website after some time as after all the procedure is done they have informed the contractor to whom the contract is awarded in the writing after that the tendering results are also published in the notice that this this contractor has been awarded with this this uh, he has fulfilled all the requirement and it is also made available on the website of that particular entity or that particular government body so this is the procedure for the submission of tender and in the notice name of winning bidder and the winning bid are made public obviously they will be showing who has won the tender bid and there will be name mentioned in that particular notice now let's see what is the procedure of opening of the tender see the sealed tenders received are to be opened in the presence of the contractors or the representatives tendering for the work at the time place already notified see the sealed tenders will be opened in the presence of the contractors or if the contractors are not present they will send the representative in that particular meeting in which they have to open the tender see sealed tenders will be received they will open the sealed tenders in the presence of contractors obviously and if they are not present the representative will be present then they will be mentioning uh, they will be opening this tender only on that time and place which is mentioned in the tender notice in the previous notice then divisional accountant should also be requested to be present on such occasion whenever possible it is advisable it is requested that divisional account divisional accountant should also be present while opening the tender then the officer opening the tender has to read out the rates offered in the case of item rate and percentage rate tenders and amount in case of lump sum tenderers tenders for information of all those present see that officer who is opening the tender he will read out loudly the rates which are offered the rates will be uh, read out in the loud if that particular tender is item rate or percentage rate and amount will be read out in the loud if it is lump sum tender there are chances there are various types of tenders if it is item rate and percentage rate rates will be read out in the loud by the officer and if it is lump sum rate tender then amount will be read out in the loud by the officer then to avoid tempering in the rates etc in the original tenders before a comparative statement is made out and put up to him by the office he has to attest the corrections overwritings etc in red ink number them and put his initial at the foot of each page of the documents attached to the tenders see there are chances that these rates will be tampered there will be alterations there there are chances of tampering of these rates so to avoid such tampering in the rates in the original tenders before the comparative statement is made what he will do he will attest the corrections if there are any corrections in the original tenders he will attest those corrections he will sign at each of the pages and each page he will sign at the bottom at the foot of the page so that there are no chances of tempering in the rates and who will do that the officer then tenders containing unauthorized corrections multi uh, mutilations are liable for rejections if he found that particular officer if he found that there are unauthorized corrections those corrections which he did not do do that but there are still some corrections which are not signed properly so he will reject that if there is mutations of that particular uh, pages or values or those values or rates then he will reject that then tenders which are not received in proper form duly filled in or signed and are not supported by the requisite earnest money are to be 
summarily rejected and a record of such cases to be kept in the register of the tenders received. See, tenders will be received. There will be number of tenders, but they can be rejected. The officer has the authority to reject that. But in which cases they will be rejected? If it is not received in the proper format, proper form, if the earnest money is not attached properly, then in that case, the officer can reject that and he will record that. What was the reason of that particular rejection? He will re register that in the register of tender. So, this is the procedure of opening of the tender. It will be opened in the presence of contractors or their representatives. Then officer will be opening. He will check any unauthorized corrections. Then he will check all the data is properly filled or not. It is in the standard format or not. Earnest money is deposited or not. It is attached uh, or not. Then if it is found that earnest money is not deposited, proper format are not there, proper forms are not filled. Then if they found that if he found that signatures are not there the contractor has not signed at the required uh, place in the forms then he will reject that and he will also notice and rejected tenders will also be mentioned they will also the record will also be kept in the register of tenders so this was the video on procedure of for submission of tender and opening of tender thank you